Hi, if you're a Windows user and you're thinking about getting one of the new Mac Minis with the M1 chip for video editing and doing other YouTube projects or you know, any other kind of video projects, this is the video for you. And stick around and we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's get into it. So I primarily have been a Windows user, even though I have had a couple Macs in the past. I bought an old lamp lamp shade <laughs> lamp uh, Mac at a garage sale once just to play around with them and then later on I I rebuilt a um, 2009 uh, pa uh, MacBook Pro uh, you know that uh, had had a lot of damage to it and I'm, I'm a t electronics uh, technician uh, by trade originally and so um, you know that was some fun I did and then I got to really use the Mac at that Mac at that time didn't really have the power to do some of the stuff I wanted to do. And one of those things is doing um, video editing. So I came across the um, uh, some YouTube videos on the uh, M1 Mac Mini. And so I I dug in and, and, and watched some of the videos and, and did some research. And, 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 you know, this thing had some phenomenal, uh, uh, phenomenal performance. You know, it's they took the chip and they basically put everything on one chip. And when you do that, you know, speaking from being an electronics guy, you put everything a lot closer together and it makes it inherently faster. And then plus all the other secret sauce. But, you know, when you put the processor, GPU, add a lot of cores, put the RAM right there, you put the, um, you know, storage right there, it's it's just an inherently fast uh, uh, computer. So anyway, so I decided uh, to, you know, wait a month <laughs> for my computer to show up and I ordered the 16 gigabyte of RAM um, M1 Mac Mini, and I but I ordered it with a, a 256 gigabytes of um, solid state drive. I got an, a $100 coupon from Autorama for the 16 gigabyte RAM Mini, and so it only upped the price of it $100 from the base price. So I ended up paying $799 for this computer. Now, if I had bought this computer with the two terabytes of storage and the 16 gigabytes of RAM off of Apple, it would have cost $1,700. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a good chunk of change. So I decided to do it differently. I did a little bit of research on external drives and I built my own. And one of the reasons you want, would want to build your own is because it's a lot faster than buying an external drive that you would buy right from someplace like Best Buy. Uh, they are primarily made for doing backups and not really as uh, you know, fast uh, storage. But the, the M1 Mac Mini has a Thunderbolt 4 ports. You know, it's fast. So what you can do, and this is what I did, is you can buy an enclosure and you can uh, get a fast enclosure and put an M.2 external solid state drive for $300. Now this is, you know, like $600 savings over what I, if I would have bought it all from Apple, you know, built in. So that's what I did. And so I'll, I'll, go, I'll go over that in a little bit. But... Uh, so here's the thing, you know, I wanted to do video editing that was painless. Uh, before in the past, I had this old uh, Dell, uh, this Windows box, and it had a pretty good GPU, but you still, things are laggy, they jump around, uh, you know, transferring it to a drive is slow. You know, I, I, I think that old Dell had, you know, USB 2 ports, and it was just painful, you know, and... And when things are, for me, when things are painful, it takes away from the creative process. And so I wanted this to all flow easily. So, so when I got this, uh, you know, I started doing some of this video editing on it. And, you know, I, first of all, I, you know, I got the, got the Mac and I set it up and it's really a nice little design, just a small little metal box. And it has a, you know, a power cord. And I had most of everything what I need before, I just plugged it in, into the uh, computer. And, uh, you know, plugged my monitor into it. I mean, I did buy a, a hub, you know, a USB hub, you know, it was Thunderbolt 3. 
And uh, it worked out really good because I needed SD card readers that aren't in the Mac Mini. And it, this came with some more USB 3 ports and it came with a uh, HDMI port. So I thought, well, this would work good. And I got it. And it didn't say it was made for this, uh, you know, in particular. And so it does have a, uh, a USB-C port on it, supposedly for charging. It doesn't seem to work, but I don't really care about that. Um, I took it and then I hooked all this up to like a little network of all the little uh, USB 2 hubs. And there was a hub on the back of my um, uh, monitor. You know, and I hooked up my keyboard. Uh, I, I bought a um, a uh, Macaulay El Cheapo keyboard. You can get these anywhere, but I got it off their website, and I really like it. You know, it's you know I read some reviews of some of the keys wore off of some of the earlier models, but it looks like they fixed that because this seems to work out fine. But you know, I've got a Wacom tablet. I've got an external, oh, I've got an external microphone, a wireless mouse, and I plug that into it. I mean, I've got a printer. I've got all this stuff kind of hooked up through the USB port or the old USB 2 hub and through the monitor, and it all works flawlessly. You know, it's hooked up to, you know, to the Mac and this other little uh, USB hub that I use for, you know, my SD cards. And then I, you know, the the um, enclosure that I made, I got this Orico, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a Thunderbolt 3, uh, 40 gigabit per second transfer rate. It's really fast and it's made to enclose an M.2 NVMe solid state drive. So I put this all together. Now this little enclosure, uh, it works really well. You know, it, I provided a link, you know, on Newegg where I got this. I, I'll provide links for all of this. Um, you know, but it, you know, it, the, the, the manual on it is just ridiculous. You know, it, it says the first step. I mean, I, you know, it's been translated from Chinese and it says to slide the case. Well, I tried to slide the case <laughs> and it didn't slide. And I realized that they had added, it must be a new feature, they added a screw in the middle of the heat sink that's on top, you know, to hold it in. If you look at the picture that they provide, there is no third screw in the middle, you know, so it didn't say to do that. So after spending five minutes trying to push this thing open, I thought it was really sticky. Uh, you know, I finally figured that out. Um, you know, and it has a piece of heat shield, which is like this foam piece. That gives, makes a conduit from the, the solid state drive to the heat sink so it can dissipate heat. It doesn't fit, you know, exactly over the heat, heat sink. So I made sure I put the, this conduit uh, over all of the RAM and, and it works well. You can touch it and it's, you know, dissipating heat and works well. And um, so, you know, the, you know, and I also took, and here's another very interesting thing. It has a one gigabit port for um, uh, networking, a networking connection on the back of this Mac Mini. Now I have a w, uh, WD Cloud, an old one that, you know, only goes at one, at one gig. And so, um, and, and here's the cool thing, you can, it's meant to plug into your router and have to wirelessly do this, but I just want to hook it directly into the computer, you know, and if you do this on a a Windows machine, I tried it on my Windows machine, it was the biggest pain in the rear I ever saw in my life. If you hook it up into a Mac, it just works. It sees it, <laughs> you click on it, it takes a bit of time for it to decide to hook to it, but then you have access to all these drop, this this, this uh, storage space. And my WD Cloud had three terabytes of storage space, so I wanted to use that. And plus, um, Macintosh Mac OS uses something called Time Machine for backup, so this has got that built into it. So I could actually, so I actually have it set up to periodically do some backups, and it does it directly to that Western Digital Cloud Drive, my cloud, which is a cloud that's yours <laughs> and not someone else's. Um, uh, so anyway, so that's kind of my setup. And I have, like I said, I'll have links to things. I'll show pictures in this, this video. You'll see them. Um, 
One th okay, now let me go over some of the Mac software. So, you know, coming from, let me discuss it. This, this, you know, the Mac software and my impressions and some of the things I really like, some of the things which I kind of don't like, but things, I, ways I've worked around them. And so uh, you get an idea how this works. Now, the one reason I wanted to get this, you know, one of the reasons was iMovie. iMovie is free. It comes with the computer. You know, it comes with a lot of... Uh, software that is uh, works well and is polished. I mean, that's the Apple way of doing things. You know, they 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 make things that re that really are easy to use and are polished. I've had uh, iPhones before, and <clears throat> everything is just sort of intuitive and better. You know, I do use a at the moment. Um, you know, I ended up giving my iPhone six to my son, and I'm using a. Google Pixel 3. I really like it. And this video is being uh, recorded on this Google Pixel uh, Google Pixel 3. And I think it does a really good job. But it's not quite as fine and, and, and polished as the iPhone was. But that's my opinion. But here's some of the here's some of the, uh, the things, or some of the programs that I use on the Mac. Okay, so, so the iMovie, I was talking about that. I really like the way it, I mean, it's sort of simple simple to use um it's not super yeah i mean you can't add like a million layers of, of, of video i mean you can put two video tracks on it and that usually works pretty well now with this video i'm actually using a green screen but i might want to use some picture in picture but so what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up running this uh, running this through and adding my background and then redoing it so any kind of video I want to pop in, well, the picture in picture work because it only gives you e either or. But because the 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 storage is so fast, and because the processing is so fast, it only takes a few minutes to do it anyway to save the video. So that's not really a problem. So anyway, I like iMovie. I think it's really simplistic. If I ever want to, you know, it really gives me. Uh, uh, encouragement that if I ever wanted to, to, you know, make the next Forrest Gump movie or something, then I might get, you know, their next yeah. step up in, that might get their next step up in uh, 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 video software that uh, Apple makes. So um, one of the next built-in things that I use is this little program called Screenshot that's built into it. I use that for uh, video uh, or capturing screen shots of things, but also captures screen video. And I have tried this, uh, you know, because I want to see how it worked with gaming. You know, if you were to um, have a, a, you know, I play tanky, you know, online. If I ever wanted to do that, I could use this camera and capture the, the audio on my mic, you know, of whatever the game is, and I could capture the screen. I think on this, that, that screenshot, you can capture audio also. But I, it really works well. You know, you can capture the area you want and just do it. Um, it's, you know, and it just comes with the with the computer. A photo booth, you can sit there, you can use that with your um, a webcam and take little videos and, and you can uh, capture, uh, you know, pictures and video and make goofy things. I, I use that a little bit too, so it's really good. I use the notes that comes with this. I mean, that's just included. In fact, I'm reading some of my outline this video off of notes. You know, I took the notes on the notes. The, another uh, really good program that's on here is QuickTime. QuickTime 20 years ago was a bane. It sucked. I hated it that if it showed up on, you know, I had to use it sometimes for Windows. And it was an Apple program on Windows and it was such a, you know, bloatware type of piece of software. I, and, and I couldn't stand it. You know, it was, it was horrible. You know, but today I think it's a really good program for playing, um, you know, playing your videos that you want to watch and for recording uh, videos and audio. Um, Office, I mean, the uh, uh, it comes with a a suite of Office tools. It's not called Office; I think it's Work, I Work, and they have their own, you know, uh, nomenclature for things. I mean, I use Pages. Pages is like their version of Word. Uh, and they also have um, Keynote, which is like PowerPoint. 
And the one thing that's kind of cool about Keynote is that you can do animated videos so you can add to your iMovies and make your, your, your videos. So if you want to do some animated graphics with bars and moving bar graphs and moving graphics and all that, you can export it in a way that it'll just easily integrate into your, um, into your iMovie. So that's that. Um, here's some, I mean, there are a lot of others too. I'm just not going to go over it in this video. I might go over certain things later. Um, here's other, other software that I use. I use Adobe uh, Creative Cloud, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, you, you know, they've made it affordable to use. I mean, it's $9.95 or $9.99 for a photography uh, package. Uh, so where I get to use Photoshop and Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, which is you know doing it all on your uh, on your own computer. You know, I'm I'm just everybody wants everybody wants your data that you stuck in their cloud. Google wants it, the Apple wants it, Adobe wants it. Everybody wants to put all your stuff in the cloud. Personally, I don't want to put all my stuff in the cloud. I do use a little bit of the Google Cloud, and I used it for sharing some pictures because at one time it was free, and they just recently changed that, but. I still think it's a good uh, cloud service, but I, you know, it gets irritating. You know, I I'd rather just save all my own stuff, and if I want to put it, just quit trying to trying to direct me there because I just don't want to use and pay for your service. Um, I don't like the Finder. You know, they have this in 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 uh, Mac OS as a Finder. You know, and I really like Windows Ex or uh, File Explorer in Windows, where you can sit there and, and find where all your uh, files are, manipulate them, and move them around. And you can do a lot of that with Finder, and it does work. But it's just not—it's not as easy just to go find the drive, your main drive, and just go look, drill down to it, and find the stuff you want, and move it or use it or whatever. And so I did find a program called uh, where is it? X Commander. X Commander uh, is a, a full-featured, uh, you know, file management tool, and um, it, it, you know, it works great. It tells you a lot of information um, on your uh, computer, so uh, it makes it a little bit easier to manage things. I also don't really like the way it, you know, with looking at pictures. I think it wants to use their photo thing, their photo program, and it wants to stick everything in the cloud. I don't want you to put my photos in the cloud. Uh, just knock it off. <laughs> so uh, I use this program called XN View, and uh, it's open source, and you know doesn't cost anything. And you can easily, you know, do some, uh, you know, do you know, look at your photos and do some minor file or picture manipulation with it. I do most of my picture manipulation with Adobe stuff just because I've used a lot of different things and it's just, you know, it, those tools are, you know, over time have grown to be, you know, fairly easy to use and useful. Um, so to me, it's worth spending 10 bucks a month. I mean, heck, you know, Netflix is 10 bucks a month or all this. Yeah, it seems like everybody wants to, to, to siphon 10 bucks a month out of you from something. Um, I also use for a browser, I use Firefox. And the reason why I use Firefox is I'm not really, okay, so first of all, Safari doesn't work on everything. They don't have a version of Firefox for Android. I mean, uh, they don't have a version of Safari for Android. It's, um, and so you don't, you can't share, you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you know, sync it together with your other devices, you know, so you can have the same experience no matter where you go. In Firefox, I can do that. I can, I have a, you know, Lenovo laptop, which uses Windows. I have a, um, you know, a tablet that's running Android, and I have my phone that's using Android. And so I want to have the same browser on all of them, so all of my bookmarks and everything are synced, so I don't have to go, you know, you know, I don't want to have to go fumbling around when I when you use one di device to the other. I might use Safari; it looks like a great program, but they just don't, you know, they're they're not wanting to, you know, use it. They are not wanting to provide a version for some of the stuff I want. I think they have a Windows version, but they don't have an Android version. Um, so I use that. Plus, I'm not really 
I, you know, here's the thing about Google. I'm not really crazy about Chrome. I don't like Chrome. I think it's kind of bloated and there's some security questions about it, you know, but there's a lot of other Google stuff that I really like. Um, so, like I said, I like their Google Photos and I use that. I also like the Google, uh, you know, suite for doing productivity stuff and you can share with other people and I think it works really well. Um, there's a little program uh, from Google called File Transfer, Android File Tran Transfer. And I put that on the Mac and so then I can plug in my Google Pixel and take this video <laughs> and use it to transfer it over to the computer so I can work on it. Works really well. I, I like that. Um, another program that I, and that's free, you know, I, and another program I use is Audacity. It is a audio uh, editing software and you can, you know, record your audio, manipulate it, uh, edit it, do whatever you want. And I just think it's very, it's a very well polished, good program and it's free. You know, it's open source, you can, um, you know, donate to their cause if you, if you want. Um, for uh, virus protection, I chose Bitdefender. Now, I researched this to death to try to figure out which one of these I wanted to use, and I finally decided on this. Uh, it's, you know, it's really hard because you look through this thing, everything online, and you have, you know, all these people who have websites who get a kickback from the stuff that you put up there. And by the way, none of this, uh, I don't have like um, programs where I'm making any money off any of the things that I'm talking about, uh, at least not at the moment. Maybe if I do, I'll let you know if I am being, <laughs> you know, paid by some of these people, but I'm, I'm not. But anyway, Bitdefender, I just like, I just thought that it was the best solution for this M1 Mac. And so I've provided a link to that. Um, as far as email, they have a really good email program on this Mac. However, I've come very accustomed on Outlook to the, um, it's got a focused and an other tab. So on the focus tab, it's all the stuff you really want, like email from people, you know, and not from companies and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's sort of like, it, it helps you to kind of fit things into three buckets. There's that email you want, from individuals that are, you know, stuff that's more important, right? And then you have that other stuff is kind of like, you know, you maybe you want to see the Best Buy ads. And so you can make sure it shows up over there. And so you can click this other tab and go take a look. You know, I like to get, you know, there's, there, you know, there's several um, things. I don't, I don't want to have to sort through all these things from companies when I really want to focus on the the emails that I'm getting from people that, you know, that might have something important to say to me. So, uh, you know, so I like that feature. And so that's why I keep using outlook.com and I just use it in Firefox and go over there and check my email when I need it. But anyway, so my overall conclusion of the M1 Mac after using it for a couple of months is that I really like it. You know, I for for doing my video editing, it's just made it smooth. Nothing's choppy. Um, it, it's easy to do. It's not cumbersome, so it doesn't interfere in like the creative process. Uh, and that was the, the important thing. You know, I've solved the problems of storage. Uh, I think it stores really fast. So using that enclosure, I can save my files to that drive. You know, it, almost as fast as I was just saving it to another drive built into the computer. So I'm really happy about that. I think most of the programs are very intuitive. Intuitive, um, You know, it's a good quality product. I like it. Anyway, so that's about all I have for today. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.